you have seven members, I would say that you may get rolling. It's exactly 2.30. Okay. Uh, your call, sir. Well, let's call this meeting to order. So it is 2.31. We do a public involvement announcement, and it's just the same when we have every meeting that AMAT's committee meetings are open to the public, and public is provided an opportunity to comment on each meeting. Business items are presented by staff or consultant. After the committee discusses the business item, the public is invited to formally comment. So to be clear, uh, Christine had mentioned on each item on the agenda, we would have a public comment period uh, before we move on. Is that correct, Christine? That's correct. Okay, so first thing we need to do is approval of the agenda. And I know there had been some correspondence that we cannot make any action items, but we could put it under uh, general information. Were there any, so they'll, did you ever send a second agenda out, Christine, or is this the original agenda that you'd sent out? This is the original one. Okay, so were there any committee members that wanted to add any items under general information? Uh, this is Jonathan Lang. Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, have a discussion about DOT's proposed regulations to allow and ATVs to operate on uh, state roads, uh, which there are uh, several of those in Anchorage that that would impact. And I think it's important that the uh, Community Advisory Committee uh, make a, a resolution either in support or against that. Are there any objections to having Jonathan's uh, discussion point under number seven, general information? Hearing none, we'll uh, discuss it under general information. Are there any other items we'd like to add to the agenda? This is SJ. Uh, I guess uh, Diana, Mike, and I have been discussing um, discussing kind of uh, a number of items related to the model and to uh, how uh, AMAS is setting priority. Um, and so if we could add that to the discussion as well. So to make sure I understand, it's a, a priority model you'd like to discuss for AMAS? Uh, yeah, priorities. I, I guess the best way to describe it is priorities and the model, uh, tra the traffic model. The, uh, the traffic model. model. Mm -hmm. Are there any objections to adding that? Okay. SJ, I think in our previous meeting, uh, there was a resolution. Was there? Do we need to add that under general information, or is that going to be discussed uh, at a? That that'll be that'll be part of the discussion. Okay. Um, we're, we're trying to decide how we want to move forward as a as a commission. So. Okay. Anything else? Right. Hey, is that Debbie Rinky? I see. Yep. Awesome. So, with uh, hearing no items, I would entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved, Michael Fenster. Can I get a second? Second, Steve Horn. That was Steve Horn, did I hear correct? Yeah, I think we had a couple of people. Yes. Okay. So, we now need to approve the meetings of uh, January 26. Has uh, everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes and are there any corrections? Well, hearing none, um, I'd like to get a motion for approval of the minutes. Hello, this is John Scudder. Hey, John. Hi there. I tried to get out on Teams and it wasn't working. Uh, Mr. Chair, you have Mr. Winchester moving the minutes. It okay. Some well, of the chat. Okay. Mr. Winchester is moving them. Can I get a second? I'm sorry. Was that a second or I'm sorry? Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're fine. No, no problem. I need a second for approval of the meeting of the uh, meeting minutes, January 26. Second, Mike Fenster. Thank you. Are there any <coughs> objections of approving the January 26 minutes? 
approved. Okay, on to action items 5A. So we have elections this meeting, which go for one year terms. And that's for chair and vice chair elections. So uh, I would, I'm not quite sure how our bylaws work. If this is a nomination meeting or this is a nomination and election. Uh, Craig, can you give a, or Christine, can someone give a quick refresher? Uh, we do it all in your, we don't need to let it sit for a month and uh, and uh, settle out. Uh, I'm double checking the bottom pull them up here. Do, 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 do. But yeah, we just need to uh, make the motion and approve it at this meeting. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, there's a, if there's a limit on that. I uh, I guess I was, this is Diane Evans. I'm wondering if I now. I'm sorry, what's that? I was wondering who the vice chair is right now. That's a the great current. question. <laughs> no, Diane Evans was asking who is the vice chair? I don't know if I know that piece of information. I'm going to look it up. I was making uh, a list of all of the committee vice chairs, and I believe that was outstanding to my recollection. But let me make sure. Well, I'm not aware who the vice chair is. <laughs> yeah, I only have the chair written down as far as. I don't know if we were able to convince someone to take that position <laughs> last year. I know there's not a term. It says the chair and vice chair shall be elected by majority votes cast and shall continue in office, office until the next annual meeting or until his or her successor shall have been elected. So uh, it looks like you can continue serving as chair for as long as folks will approve you if you are indeed the chair. Good to go. So I am interested in serving as the chair, but at the same time, uh, as other people have afforded me the opportunity to become chairs of different organizations, <clears throat> if there is uh, someone that is strongly passionate to step into the chair, you know, I would, uh, I don't object to that. I'm not trying to, not a dictatorship here. Um, so I don't know, what's the will of the body? Steve Horn speaking. Uh, Matt, you've done a wonderful job. I, I suggest that you continue. Well, I appreciate that, Steve. Cutter, second. Jonathan Lang speaking. I'd like to uh, second that. I, I think you've done a great job, Matt. Thank you. So uh, it sounds like we have a, uh, a motion on the floor, and I don't know. I don't know how much of Robert's rules we need to be down here. I don't know if I can, with me having the nomination, I, I, unless somebody objects, I'm just going to carry this, keep on going. Um, so we have a first and second to uh, nominate me for uh, chair for CAC for another year. Do we have any objections? Hearing none, looks like you have me for another year. Now, uh, is there anyone that is interested in stepping into uh, vice chair? And you know the responsibilities of a vice chair is uh, obviously if the chair isn't able to make a meeting that they would. And this is a uh, not I won't use the word easy, but this is not a heavily time involved uh, committee other than the other than what you want to put into it. If someone in long term, they would have the possibility of uh, moving to chair if they were interested. I saw that there was a message chat right there, but uh, I'm using my phone and I could not see what the comment said or anything. I'm uh, sponsoring it, Mr. Chair, and uh, so far you have a uh, no objection from SJ saying congratulations and then the motion from Mr. Winchester that I mentioned. Awesome. OK, so if we don't have any. Uh, do we need a vice chair? <laughs> It'd be nice to have in case you can't make a meeting. So who's our longest uh, serving committee member? 
Mr. Chairman, if I may, this is SJ. I would recommend that instead of looking at who the longest serving committee member is, maybe the one who showed up to the most meetings over the that's last year. That's a really good, yeah, that's a huge point, SJ. I really like that. But is attendance recorded? We do keep track. Okay. I don't know, we have, have it right here in front of us, but I think uh, you're probably either Mr. Horn or Mr. Lang out of the folks that are on that's right my now. I got to, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this is Steve. This is Steve Horn, and I would suggest I not that I would not take that position. Um, I've been actually I've been on this committee now probably longer than my term allows, and uh, I'm considering here in the next half a year probably uh, looking for a replacement. So understood. Well, that actually makes it easier because there are two people that I was thinking about. Uh, Mr. Lang, Hello. would you be interested? Uh, actually, I was uh, going to express a, a similar uh, <laughs> sentiment to Mr. Horn. I, I believe he and I have served on the committee the longest and uh, may have gone past our expiration date. Uh, and I'm also currently serving on another uh, municipal board, uh, which is taking up more time than this. Not that I don't love you guys, but I, I don't think it's and, and my attendance hasn't been the best in the last year, so I don't think I'm necessarily the best choice for vice chair. I did hear Mr. Scudder just start to talk. Yes, I'll, I'm interested. Perfect. Good. Well, John's been around a while. Well, I would nominate Mr. Scudder. And this is Jonathan Lang. I second that. Perfect. Any objections? Well, it looks like we have a vice chair. Thank you. Thank you. So with uh, our action items completed, I'm gonna move on to number six, projects and plan updates. So 6A, Glen Highway Artillery and Highland Road PEL update. So who is speaking on this, Christy? Jay, I believe James is going to share some information. Ooh, let's hear it. Hey, James. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is James Starzik, the uh, AMATS coordinator for DOT and PF. Um, so at our last meeting, there was some conversation uh, regarding the Highland, Highland southbound ramp, uh, whether or not that was uh, being developed as an HSIP project uh, or what the status of that would be. Uh, so I dug into it a bit. Uh, it's currently not a, there is no HSIP project planned for there. Um, our traffic safety section uh, doesn't consider there to be the crash data that justifies a project there. Um, but uh, they're always willing to uh, to debate it and, and discuss um, the there they they do have a nomination um, window open right now for HSIP projects. Uh, July first would be the submittal deadline. Uh, so if uh, if that was something that uh, uh, anybody any any interested party would uh, would like to do, uh, please contact the traffic safety department at the DOT. Um, and, and talk to them about how best to submit uh, submit the project. Um, currently planning uh, is promoting uh, the Highland Southbound Ramp uh, improvement project uh, to our uh, headquarters in Juneau. Um, it's currently uh, in the MTP, uh, Project 205 Glen Highway on-ramp merge lane, uh, merge upgrades. Uh, it's, a, it's in the long term uh, list of projects, but it's in there. Um, it's also uh, mentioned in the Glen Highway Integrated Corridor Management Study. Uh, so there's definitely some documented need. Um, and uh, my, my direction from management uh, would, would has been to convey that if uh, if if the community advisory committee uh, wishes to 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 help promote this project, uh, adding some sort of resolution uh, to add this project to the statewide transportation improvement pro program, 
uh, during the next amendment period uh, would probably be a, a, an excellent uh, step uh, that y'all could take uh, to support the uh, the promotion of this project by the Anchorage field office. And with that, I will take any questions. So I guess a point of information, uh, Craig, maybe you can uh, remember. So about two years, I've, two years ago, we passed a, I thought we did two separate motions. Um, one was for a merge lane improvements and one was for uh, artillery road, uh, art for doing artillery road, uh, what do you call it, uh, interchange. Yep. Didn't we support uh, merge lane improvements that, that was encompassed in the Highland Southbound. Uh, I know that you supported the merge lane project that were listed in the. You know, what was that plan called? Integrated border management mentioned. study. Yeah, exactly that one. I know you supported that uh, and shared it with the uh, technical and policy committees, and they were discussing yeah. the tip. Okay. Um. So James, just so I can understand what uh, to be clear. They were looking for specific uh, support of the southbound if there was interest in it. Not right. uh, OK. Yeah, that wasn't and the, for it, it was just clarification. Yeah, and the current iteration of the project seems to be not a uh, a redesign or a uh, a lengthening of the southbound merge, uh, but actual uh, construction of a right turn merge similar to what you see on the westbound uh, artillery uh, southbound merge lane where you as you're driving westbound you take a right so you're not crossing any lanes of traffic to loop underneath the bridge uh, and, and, and gain access onto the highway. So James, uh, while you're on this subject, so I've, we've been hearing a lot of uh, information about the Glen Highway uh, artillery road i heard that on the stip they actually put a slot for it for design this coming year uh and actually construction in three or four years from now and they've canceled the pel uh and there might be some funds coming from which hasn't uh, there might be some a separate funding source coming as part of design as well can you speak on any of that uh no i cannot <laughs> i uh, <laughs> i'm i'm not familiar with the uh W with where that uh, artillery project is at at the moment. Okay. If uh, we are close to design, would, do you think on the next meeting, I know you're pretty good about following up on different things, could you ask potentially leadership to see uh, if design is fully funded? Uh, yeah, certainly. Awesome. Um, and actually, I'm just trying to see if I can quickly answer that. So while James is looking that up, um, are there any other questions from uh, committee members for the Glen Highway Artillery and Highland Road PEL updates? This is SJ. I am curious about uh, the Pell being canceled or the Pell process being canceled and just moving straight to divine design phase. So um, yeah, I just wanted to reinforce the interest on the part of the commission and uh, knowing what's going on there. Agreed. Yeah, at this at this time there is no plan uh, to develop the PEL. Uh, that was a decision made. Uh, uh, I believe at the commissioner level. Well, James, uh, if you do find that project listed, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, or an update next meeting, that'd be great too. But uh, sure. otherwise, I think we'll move on to uh, 6B, and that's uh, the Anchorage Downtown Plan Step 2. Mrs. Christine Burnell. Is Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm here to share with you a little bit about the update to the downtown comprehensive plan. And uh, if it's OK, I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you and. We'll go through that. Go for it. 
hopefully very quickly. See if I can get that going. OK, so uh, I won't be able to see you all while I'm sharing this, so just interrupt me if anybody has any comments or questions or anything like that. So uh, thank you for allowing me to present. I'm Christine Bennell. I'm with the planning department in the long range uh, division. And I am the project manager for the downtown comprehensive plan update. And uh, I have a team which I'll talk about uh, where we call uh, the, the downtown plan update our downtown step two. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. So we always want to uh, acknowledge the land that we're on, and it is with gratefulness and respect that the planning team wishes to acknowledge the traditional homeland of the Denina Athabascans and the contributions Alaska Native peoples make to our community and society today. We would especially acknowledge the traditional importance of the area considered for this downtown plan and for Ship Creek as the uh, traditional first salmon ceremony start site. Thank you. OK, so I'm going to talk a little bit about who uh, our timeline, why we're doing this, how in code we're directed to do this, a little bit about what we've done so far and uh, the progress of the plan. The plan was adopted in 2007. We've had a lot of progress. I'm going to talk a little bit about participation and then, like I said, a little bit about the three step process. So um, our stakeholders and planning team, there's the planning team right there, M Michelle McNulty, Carol Wong, myself and Tom Davis from the planning department. Huddle AK includes Holly Spoth Torres and Michelle Farabach, and then Shanna Zuspin from uh, Agnew Beck. And uh, we encourage all groups to comment and participate. You all are stakeholders. Uh, you'll help provide guidance uh, to our team in the plan process. Definitely need you to comment to give us direction, recommendations, any action items. And if you could reach out to your community members, friends, colleagues, let them know about the planning process. And then there is our website right there, ourdowntownanchorage.com. So uh, again, why are we doing this? It is a 10 year targeted review of the plan. Uh, which is uh, articulated by a AMC 2103070 comprehensive plan amendments. The downtown plan is identified as a comprehensive plan. And so we've initiated this review of the plan with respect to uh, to make sure that the plan is consistent with the economic and demographic trends that are happening right now. Any recent and proposed land use decisions and we're supposed to factor in any adopted studies and plans. And right there you see the cover of our trends report that was published for a public kickoff meeting, which was in January. And the trends report talks about existing conditions and goes into much more in depth of what I'm going to do today. And so that is on our website and I would encourage you to take a look at that. The trends report depended a lot on uh, AEDC's 2023 year outlook report and then a, a downtown residential housing study in Performa that Agnew Beck completed for us. So uh, with respect to demographics, in 2007 there were about 1900 people in downtown and the plan projected that there would be almost 4700 residents by 2025. That was based on an MTP aggressive growth model. Well, that really hasn't happened. And uh, in 2019, there was an estimate of 400 or excuse me, 895 residents. And then in 2018, 938. So we're losing residents right now in the downtown area. However, this did not factor in the new housing units that have gone in there. So that's gone up a little bit. Um, the 2025 estimate. Uh, would have given us uh, the of the 4700 folks was based on a lot of downtown housing units proposed in the downtown plan and uh, a lot of that didn't happen but is it but there is some happening recently which we'll talk about economics um, in 2007 there they thought there were about 1700 jobs in the downtown area 
it did include 99501, so that factors in a little bit larger area than downtown. Uh, when I talked to AD, ADC recently, how many jobs do they think could be downtown? They said maybe about 21,000. So uh, we do have um, a few more jobs, but we have lot, lost a lot because of the pandemic, as you all know about. So the trends report um, has a report out on the plans and studies and the land use actions that have been adopted or completed. And this is just a couple of different pages from the trends report. So on the left side there, you'll see contributing plans and studies. And then the land use actions are those actual assembly ordinances that have been adopted since 2007. Um, one in 2014 for the Fairview East Downtown Economic Development and Tax Abatement Zone. And then we've got our 2019 uh, ho Downtown Housing Tax Incentive. And uh, then we also um, just adopted a reformat of the Downtown Zoning Districts and that occurred um, uh, last year. OK, so then the trends report goes through the action items that are in Chapter 8 of the downtown plan. And uh, this is, again, just representative pages from the trends report. Um, all kinds of different action items if you're not familiar with the plan. But on the right there, you'll see uh, under that brown heading there, street conversions and reconstructions. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that as we get further on. The trends report also uh, reported out on a strategy framework and diagram that's in the plan. And this was a proposal for several different catalytic sites development within the downtown area. Some has been done, some hasn't. And uh, so we would appreciate your comment on um, this strategy diagram. And I'll talk a little bit about our survey, which includes questions on this portion of the existing plan. So getting back to uh, what's been done, there were 57 action items listed in the plan, 14 or about 25% are complete, 17 or about 29% received little or no action, and 27 or about 50, 46% have received action, uh, some action and are ongoing. And uh, I'll just give you a list of what's been done. Um, quite a bit. We have quite a few successes and I'm not going to read all of these out. Actually, I think. Oh, here we go. That's a little bit better. So we've got, you know, some new housing, Elizabeth Place. We've got the Block 96 flats proposed. Um, we've got uh, some lots on 8th and I where they're doing brownfield evaluations where some new housing could go. We've got the downtown uh, edge. We've got Conchie Place. We've got historic buildings that have been renovated. The uh, museum has been renovated. Uh, Town Square Park Master Plan. Um, just just kind of naming a few things there. And um, I'll make this available to you guys so that you can have it too if you'd like it. So then let's move on a little bit. This is our residential market study which again is part of the trends report. It goes into a little bit of in-depth of how many housing units are actually in the downtown area. And we just did a little graphic so that folks could see where those are. And um, associated with this map then is Agnew Beck um, wanted to answer four questions with this market study. So how much housing is there in downtown? How many live there today? And again, those estimates that I gave you earlier are uh, based a little bit on this report. Uh, what are the new housing projects? What's the scale? What type? What are the demographics of downtown? How do we compare to other downtowns in the lower 48? And what are some policy recommendations that could be made? So the report that Agnew Beck uh, completed for us, answers all those questions. And again, that's also on our website and I would encourage you to go in and take a look at that. What we did with the pro forma and right there in the middle in orange is our downtown example. And uh, what we're finding is a project gapped in funding 
in not only in downtown, but in a lot of other areas of downtown. So uh, what this plan will probably make a recommendation on is uh, new and different ways that we could close this project gap so that we can get more housing in the downtown area, as well as the rest of Anchorage for that matter. <laughs> So these are again from that report, what kind of um, what makes uh, a mixed use and residential housing uh, feasible and again tax municipal tax and tools, private sector and then uh, match matching financial winners and losers and that could be uh, a hotel that's got housing over it or something like that. And again, that report goes into that in depth. So for the trends report, we also produced um, a few different maps. So these are the maps right there, and I'm only going to talk about two of them right now. This is a taxable value per acre by parcel uh, in the Anchorage area, and the red and the orange spikes that you see off into the distance on the left side there, that's how much taxes are are uh, brought in from the downtown area and why downtown is so valuable and why it needs to be supported so that, um, I mean, these taxes are spent throughout the Muni. So if we have a healthy downtown economy, that's gonna help the entire municipality of Anchorage. Okay, our second map is our study area boundary. And uh, the 2007 plan, hopefully you guys can see this, there's a little orange dotted line there. Um, we expanded the boundary out over east to Ingra and all along 10th Avenue and then up along Ship Creek there. And uh, in that, th we extended the boundary for two things because of the Fairview neighborhood plan and also because of the 2040 land use plan. We wanted to be consistent with that. So that purple that you see is uh, the city center designation from the 2040 land use plan. So this is our study area boundary. Okay, so what have we done so far? We've finalized our study area boundary map. We've updated our vision. Uh, we've talked about the 2007 uh, overarching goals and those are going to stay the same. We've got our great project website. We've been holding one on one community council and subcommittee meetings. We have an online survey which ends on April 30th and over 300 people have responded so far. So we're really excited about that. And then we're working on our updated plan outline right now that's under construction. So here's our vision. It basically is the same as it was from 2007. We added the bottom sentence that uh, there that's in blue. Our downtown belongs to everyone. And uh, uh, the vision was updated in meetings, uh, different meetings with uh, different folks. And we still felt that this downtown vision is um, still workable for our vibrant northern city center. OK, our uh, uh, the plan update, the overarching goals. These are from 2007. Everybody said they still think that they work. Um, again, you can comment on that. We're leaving them as they are right now, but right now these are the overarching goals for this plan update. OK, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the survey. Um, the survey is online, it's on our website, and it asks specific questions about action items that are in the plan that haven't been implemented. And it'll, um, anything that hasn't been done, we have a question in there, should we do this? Does this still work for downtown? Related to the strategy framework, we talk about the catalytic sites and we ask you, are these catalytic sites still important to the downtown planning area? If not, do you guys have ideas for where other catalytic sites are? So that gives you a little bit of flavor of what the survey is about. OK, so I said it was a three step process. So step one was reformatting the downtown zoning districts and we reformatted that old code to the, court, to the current Title 21 code format. 
Now, there were a few nice things that were added into the code that help um, downtown development be a little bit more affordable, but there's still more work to do. So that's why we're doing step two right now. We're doing the, the plan update and then the plan update, we uh, may add recommendations or action items that will help in the update of the down, the final update of the downtown zoning districts, which is step three, and that will uh, occur uh, in probably start in 2022. So um, how can you guys participate? You can register at the website. You can also take the survey. Um, give us your comments, participate in the different meetings that we have, share the project with uh, anybody and everybody, staff, employees, colleagues, anyone who lives downtown. Call us or email me with questions or comments because we would love to hear from you. Invite me to a meeting. I kind of invited myself to this meeting, but if you guys have other meetings that you guys want me to attend, invite me to your meetings and uh, we we just want everybody to participate. So uh, we're in April. We're going to complete the online survey at the end of this month. Our um, engagement is going to continue. We uh, I meet uh, monthly with the downtown community council and then I've been meeting with Fairview Community Council and Government Hill um, in July. We hope to have the public review draft of the of the um, plan and then we'll have some technical advisory and stakeholder meetings with that public review draft. Uh, August um, we'll have our com our next community meeting, hopefully oct October a public hearing draft and then November, December working with the Planning and Zoning Commission and then into March with the assembly. So it's a pretty aggressive timeline um, and um, we we felt that that's the way to move it forward because we're hearing so much about um, updates that we need to do to the code for downtown to help help uh, make downtown more affordable to develop in. So just a, a thought we had uh, an Oklahoma City delegation come in Anchorage in uh, 2016 and they said focus on downtown first make it a great place to be and that's what we're trying to do with this plan downtown belongs to everyone and uh, we need to do things to bring people downtown so that they can live here work here and recreate here and uh, also our visitors too i mean people travel from all over the world to come to anchorage and see our downtown area so with that, um, there's our website and I will quit sharing unless we want to have questions and I need to go back. So before we open this up to the public, I think somebody has double phones on right now, so they would be uh, maybe mute their devices. Thank you. Uh, so first we'll bring it up to, uh, oh, we got a hand up open right now. Who has their hand up? Michael Fenster. Yes, Mike Fenster here. Um, a quick question uh, from the beginning of your slideshow. You showed um, the jobs in district or zip code 99501. I'm wondering if the jobs in the federal building are included in that, being that the federal building has its own zip code. And if you don't know, that's okay. Oh, uh, I didn't realize the federal building had its own zip code. Yeah, it's 523, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, okay. it's its own zip code. And it's a pretty good um, amount of parking spaces needed, not for the federal building, but also the Social Security Administration as well. Okay. SJ, I saw you had your hand up. Thank you. Great, thanks guys. Uh, yeah, this is SJ and Christine. I was typing my question as well, but uh, yeah, I'll ask it in person. Um, are there specific projects identified in the R Downtown Plan that you would like to bring to the attention of this committee? In other words, that are under the purview of AMAS. So I'm thinking of things like the Gamble Street Redevelopment Project, the Fairview Glen Pell, and uh, and the potential cover uh, that may come with uh, a redirected highway. 
um, you know, those are the two things that I'm aware of that are on the east end of the project area. Um, can you, would you be able for this committee uh, to just identify specific projects that are, you know, that are related to transportation, uh, especially on um, on the state-owned highway, you know, Fifth Six, uh, AC, Glen Seward, and uh, and I believe um, the Minnesota, you know, L and K are in that project area. Uh you're making things easy for me, SJ. <laughs> so you guys saw the, the study area boundary. Uh, it goes all the way over to Ingra. Uh, so that includes the Gamble Street Corridor redevelopment project. It also includes the highway to highway connection. Um, also in Chapter 8 of the plan, if you look and it starts on page 32 where all the street conversions and reconstructions are and that is convert d street to two-way traffic convert f street to two-way traffic reconstruct g street uh, reconstruct 7th avenue uh, make streetscape improvements on 6th uh, yeah, convert 3rd Avenue to one way westbound in a certain area, convert 5th Avenue to two way traffic. Um, yes, these are all items that are still in the downtown plan and the survey specifically asks you the question, should this project still be in the plan? And then at, and then it asks for any comments. There's also um, there's also transit uh, system uh, projects that were in there, um, bus tour operations. You guys are also, um, I'm assuming that you're also going to be interested in wayfinding. Um, that's for further down. And um, so, yes, as a as a citizen advisory group, um, you're more than welcome to take a review of Chapter 8 and give us as a group recommendations if you want to. The other thing that um, we've talked about internally in the planning department, it's, you know, it's interesting that they included all these street conversions and uh, different things like that in the plan and reconstructions. But, you know, we really need to have a study that tells us how that's going to work and if it's going to work and how do we need to phase it to make that to make those projects work together. So maybe it's a recommendation from you all that these projects stay in the plan as well as add uh, the Fairview East Downtown related projects, but also let's do a study to see how these projects can be um, can work together and be implemented and timed and and you know estimated for funding and that kind of thing too. So Christine, it was, related that was to that, I've got a follow-up question. Sure. So, um, I guess if uh, you know part of what this body does is kind of recommend priorities. Is there a prioritization process in the our, our downtown plan? Or are you just listing kind of everything that needs to happen? Well, right now, SJ, I'm just kind of listing what could go in the plan as far as a um, or stay in the plan as far as projects go. But I think a priority could be for you guys, and I'm not trying to lead you guys in any direction or anything. Keep in mind, I'm staff here. I'm neutral on this kind of situation. But um, like I said, I don't think any of these street conversions or that kind of thing could happen without a meaningful study to figure out how to make it work, you know, who's going to maintain what and, you know, that kind of situation. So I, I think before we could even get into um, having any of these street conversions and stuff done that we would need to do that study. I will say though, uh, because I've heard from someone in the traffic department that there is an action item, it's T12, that talks about adjusting the timing of traffic signals to reduce the average speeds. 
that could probably be done now from what I heard um, without a, a big long term study. So, you know, you guys might want to take a look at that. I don't know if you do subcommittees or whatever of your committee, but um, yeah, I would suggest that you take a look at these and maybe discuss them together as a subcommittee and then you guys can make your recommendation. Christine, quick question, follow up on that one. Uh, as far as your knowledge goes, is in the long range MTP 2040, are there any uh, plans, be it in the illustrious or long term, that exist for a study that you're referencing? No. Uh, the, are you talking about the actual study? Yeah. So a lot. No, of time, it's know, not. Hope. It's not listed in in any of AMAT's uh, plans right now. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Do we have any it, committee member? Go ahead. Excuse me, real quickly. Like I said, the study idea came up in conversation within the planning department because as we were looking, you know, we've been looking at the document and saying, OK, how could we make this document work? Why were some things done and some things not done? And I'm a former transportation uh, analyst from Nevada DOT. I was with them for uh five years and then with the regional transportation commission which was the mpo which is the mpo for the las vegas area and um i looked at these and i said well how do we even know this is going to work so that's where we got the idea where a study really needs to be done on these street conversions uh to see how they would work and then who's going to manage what because there's dot streets muni streets things like that Do we have any committee member comments before we open it to the public? So if someone has their hand up, I can see it on my There we go. Sorry, this is SJ one last time. I uh, I guess we're going to be uh, discussing, I think, uh, developing an ad hoc committee um, to kind of look at priorities for, uh, for our commission. Um, you know, this sounds like you'd be under the purview of that when you get there in the agenda. OK. Thank you. Well, hearing no other comments or seeing any hands raised, do we have any uh, comments from the public? We don't have any comments from the public at this time. OK. Well, uh, Christine, did you have anything else to add before uh, we move on? No, um, thank you for sharing. Please go to the website and take the survey if you haven't already. And uh, I will stop sharing and um, looking forward to hear from you guys. And thank you so much for letting me participate with you today. I appreciate it. I will um, I will stay on to listen to the rest of your agenda. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you again, Christine. Sure. OK, so moving on, we're going to go under general information items. We're going to go to 7A, and that's our new CAC member, Diana Evans. Welcome, Diana. Good afternoon. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I don't think too much of us. I don't think, well, I, I don't know what district you're even representing. I probably should. <laughs> I'm I'm in District 4, uh, which is the uh, district uh, assembly district represented by um, um, Meg Salatel and Felix um, Rivera and Midtown. Basically, I'm in Rogers Park. Uh, we moved here in 95, bought a house. So I've lived here for 20 in in this house for almost 25 years. Uh, been active in our community council. Uh, been active. The transportation area we've uh, paid attention to the mtps over the years as they've come out and uh with this being kind of the opening uh time frame for the next update i thought this would be a really great time to get involved awesome. oh and uh 
Thanks. I'm an engineer by training. I'm a chemical engineer, and uh, I retired uh, in 2016. So you have some extra time on your hands. <laughs> it's a dangerous combination. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if anyone else is retired here, you know how that goes. You retire and then you're busier than when you work. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, discussions. So uh, moving on to general information item B, AMAT's quarterly newsletter. I'm not sure if everybody got a chance to take a look at it. Yeah, we just wanted to bring it up and show you it. If you did not get a chance to look at it, kind of go through um, the format, which we'll follow. It's a quarterly newsletter, so this is our first one. Right now, it's um, if you're on the AMAX website, you can click the web banner at the top. It'll bring it to you. Um, someday, we'll change that information to new pertinent information. So moving forward, it will be there's a newsletter just in the side left hand side column, you would click on that and then you can find all the newsletters. Um, so I'll just bring it up quickly and run through the format. Um, it's a storybook, so it's digital. If somebody wants a printed copy or a translated copy, we're happy to do that. Um, these are the different sections. They'll always be at the top so that if you just want to jump to a section, you can do that. Um, first, just in this issue, so you can see what particular topics will be discussed in each of the sections. We'll always have a message from Craig, just kind of summarizing the quarter. We'll have commit a section for the committee, so different pertinent information that came out, any resolutions, seat changes, seats that are open. I right know there's one on the BPAC, so if you know anybody um, is part of a community environment or environmental organization, they want to serve on a committee, they can let us know. Um, and we're going to have a spotlight. Um, we hope that committee members will participate in this moving forward. Um, this time, Aaron has agreed to be spotlighted a little bit about him and then his trusted companion, Dozer. Um, community, just any different events. Joni Wilm went on a winter bike tour where they looked at facilities uh, and just talked about what worked, what didn't work, the um, trials of commuting in the winter, so this is the path that they took. Um, it was to kind of introduce Donovan, who's the state, um, Alaska State Bicycle and Pedestrian Coordinator. He's in Juneau, so kind of to introduce him to Anchorage and some of the facilities here. Um, then there's a plans and programs section. We're gonna always kind of break those down by primary programs and secondary programs. We're talking about the 2050 MTP. Um, just to let you know, it's a long planning process. The 2040 just came out, but the RFP for the 2050 has um, already gone out and um, different submittals are being reviewed right now. Just a general timeline that will, will be followed through that planning process. Um, the TIP Amendment 2, there is a public review, so just a little bit about that. A particular amendment and public review. And the secondary programs, the non-motorized plan, um, in February, Joni had a, an open house, so there's a couple of surveys during that open house. These are just some of the results for people that participated. Um, she's still going through the over 800 plus comments for the plan, so continue to check back. We'll have more information on that plan moving forward. Um, remind everybody this Bernard Corner plan is released and complete, or you can find it on the website. Um, Title 21 parking, so this is a Plane Department project and Tom Davis from the Long Range Plane Department met with three of our committees to discuss the project. Um, for more information, you know, it's a link to the project website and to Tom. And then there will always be a transit section um, at the end. This quarter they wanted to hi highlight that they have fat tire bike racks on all of the buses now. They did a rider survey. Um, due to the pandemic to see what was working, what wasn't, what feedback people had for them. Here's a couple of the stats, but if you want to look at the entire survey, there's a link to the survey. Um, and they also released their 2020 system report card. This is an annual report card that looks at each route and looks at the various performance measures that they um, analyze. And then there's going to be a transportation one-on-one -on -one project or section for the newsletter. We just went with what is an MPO in this one, talked about AMAT, 
and how they can be set up um, differently in Fairbanks. It's a freestanding MPO and a not in here in Anchorage, we are housed within the planning department. And then just to highlight upcoming meetings for the next quarter, um, committee meetings, uh, link to join the mailing list. And even if you're on it, um, you can click which notifications you would like by using this link. And then um, a survey. So after if anyone's read the survey or read the newsletter, you can take our survey, let us know what you liked, what you didn't, so that we can always make make it more um, user friendly moving forward and get the right information out. So that's about it. Well, I'm sure you've had a lot of positive uh, feedback, but I just want to say this is a huge improvement. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is a nice tool that you can share to people that are interested in finding out what AMS is doing. So I, I just want to give a, a, that a boy to, I'm not sure who spent the time to create this or who's ultimately brainchild, but it, I think it was very well put together and uh, nice job. Thanks. That is 100% Christine who created that. And uh, uh, we've been wanting to do a newsletter for a while. And obviously she stepped up and made this incredible newsletter. So it's a great, great piece of work. Thank you. Yep, I think so too. It was a good job. Thanks. So uh, if there's not any questions about our AMS quarterly newsletter, we're going to move to 7C, Mr. Lang's uh, the proposed legislation about uh, ATVs on public use roads. Mr. Lang, you want to speak on uh, your item? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, if you guys are not aware, the state is considering a regulation change to allow both ATVs and snow machines on all state roads that have a speed limit of 45 miles per hour or less. Uh, I sent out, uh, I should have sent it out earlier, uh, I sent out an email just a couple minutes ago with a link to the exact language. Um, my personal feeling on this is this is a poor choice for Anchorage. Um, you know, there's already people in my neighborhood anyway that are rallying around on their ATVs and uh, you know, even if Anchorage, one of the options is for municipalities to opt out, but I think that even if Anchorage opts out, people are going to still do it and say, well, I didn't know. Uh, and my personal feeling is that ATVs and snow machines are not designed for on-road use, and uh, there's no place for them to be uh, used in the municipality on the roads. And we should uh, make a resolution and send it up, up to the policy committee saying that uh, it, my opinion is that we oppose it. Uh, and that's that's all I've got for today. I wanted to cover kind of a procedural item. Uh, so I have the feeling we're going to have a couple of action items on the horizon here shortly. Um, but what is the precedence? So if we just send out and Craig, I think this is directed more at you. If we send out notice 30 days before uh, and ask to have a resolution uh, on the on the agenda right there. A, a lot of the committees I have usually have a, a two meeting rule that you would discuss the action item and you wouldn't vote on it the same meeting that you have that. Do we have anything in place like that or just so I'm aware? Our uh, our public involvement rules are fairly simple. We need to have if we have an action item we have to have we post it. it agenda a week in advance. So uh, if we post it a week in advance, then uh, at the meeting, the next meeting, you can act on it right away. We are not okay. required to that first and so second you, meeting sort of. You cut in and cut out just for a second there, and I think it was pretty clear what you said, but as long as you give uh, a one week notice, we can have a action item and take, we, we could, uh, for example, Jonathan Lang sent uh, his motion, in, or does he doesn't have to send his motion, he just has to get it on the agenda, and we could, uh, if the resolution was drafted, we could vote on it uh, this meeting if he would have had it a week in advance. That is correct. And and I will I will uh, I will let you know this about that particular rule. Um, the challenge, the reason it can be challenging is that um, for some, some places such as Fairbanks, etc., they don't have road powers. So they're not able to control the laws regarding their roads. But in the municipality of Anchorage, we already have a uh, section in our municipal code 9.42 that discusses 
um, off-road vehicles, off-highway vehicles, and it already says they can only cross the right-of-way but not drive down streets, sidewalks, alleys, shoulders, or medians. It's very specific. So there may be people who are rallying, as, as Jonathan said, rallying their ATVs uh, in, a, in anticipation of that, but it won't change uh, any of the rules. It's already against the law for them to do it. They can already be cited, et cetera. So um, that's just information. If the if the committee wants to pass a resolution in support or, or against that red that uh, regulation, uh, you know it's not that is that's up to you, I guess. But it is already illegal in the municipality of Anchorage because we have the municipality has road powers. So uh, Mr. Lang is raising his hand. Mr. Lang. Yes, uh, as an avid bicyclist, one of my big concerns is is that uh, again, you know, yes, it's illegal in the municipality. I don't see the municipality accepting this rule, uh, but I want I want the the citizens advisory committee to kind of make a statement saying, you know, we the people don't really want this change. And again, my my big concern is safety, and and I think if you know people are going to use the bike lanes, cars already use the bike lanes. We don't want to see snow machines and, and four wheelers in the bike lanes too. Uh, and again, my, my primary concern here is safety. So just a suggestion, and I'm uh, completely open to being on the fly somewhat, but uh, would you consider drafting a resolution that uh, com committee members could review uh, just to have a bit more meaningful discussion uh, for our next uh, CAC meeting? Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, I will I will also tell you this that the MPO of Fairbanks, which is called fast planning, uh, I think it's Fairbanks area study of transportation. They passed a resolution oh about a month and a half ago that uh, on three topics and one of them was these proposed regulations. So um, I'll be in the office tomorrow and I can track that down and share it with this committee. Uh, uh, there's language in there on it that might help you, Jonathan, as you draft it. Um, I know that our AMATS bike and ped committee, when at their next meeting, which is June 1st, they have this as a topic of conversation, so they may want to pass a resolution too. It's not, you know, it's not completely related to an MPO. It's more related to the municipality, but um, I have no idea what the policy committee might want to do. They might want to join the crowd as well. It, I, after all, it was the Fairbanks MPO that drafted this resolution talking about it. So. Um, that's just information for everybody. But I can I can share that uh, thing that uh, Fast sent out. The Wild West of AMATS, it sounds like. Good times. Hey, um, so, this is Diana Evans. Uh, I have a, a kind of question about action items. Uh, as since I was you know new here, I found out I found some bylaws for the CAC on the AMAPS website, and it really doesn't have anything about action items, resolutions um, that, that actually describes the process. Am I, um, is it in another place or am I missing something? Yeah, yeah, all that information is inside the AMATS public involvement plan. So the AMATS okay. public involvement plan about how all the committees are supposed to be governed in terms of how we allow or how we help the public get interact with us. So it talks about that one week time frame. So um, if you, uh, I can share that with you as well. Uh, I think uh, our website, but if it's on the website, uh, I can find it. I just um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's great. there under our governing documents. Okay. So Dana, just to. I think I can just answer something real quick, though, and I know that Craig will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, <laughs> but we don't directly communicate with the public. We communicate uh, with the Technical Advisory Committee, and the Technical Advisory Committee communicates with the Policy Committee. So the Policy Committee is ultimately who has authority. So we're basically, uh, any motions that we make, we have to go, through. we're not uh, directly communicating to the public, like I was saying, it's going to go through that uh, chain of command even if we wanted to communicate something directly to the policy we still have that uh, chain of command in place is that correct Craig yeah the 
all the advisory committees, the policy committee has said we want everyone's uh, thoughts, etc., resolutions to go through the TAC, the technical advisory committee, before they get to the policy committee. Um, so you are on point. Okay. And that's actually uh, described in the bylaws. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, Christine just posted the link to the AMATS public involvement plan in the uh, team chat here, so you can track it down fairly easily. So did we have any other comments on uh, Mr. Lang's uh, governor's uh, proposed legislation regarding the ATVs? Hearing none, we're going to move on to 7D, which is SJ. I was going to uh, say this is Bob French. I did have a comment actually. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I've, I've spent a fair amount of time out in the villages and things like that. And um, I think that there is already an awful lot of snow machine and ATV traffic in the villages. But overall, I think it it's just not something which is very applicable to have it as broad based as all of the you know, high streets and highways with less than 45 miles an hour. That's just clearly not appropriate for for uh, ATV use. That's all. Good comment. Do we have any other comments or I guess I should open it up to the. Do we have any public even attending this meeting right now? We do. OK, we don't have any comments currently. Good to go. Well, if there's any objection, I'm just going to move on to 7D. Uh, SJ, you wanted to talk about your uh, priority model and traffic? Yeah, hi, everybody. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I. Uh, the reason for bringing this up now, I mean, I mentioned kind of what was frustrating me and where I think there there needs to be some focus brought. Um, you know, as far as how prioritization for the MTP and LRTP are made, um, you know, basically, I believe that our model, uh, the, the traffic model that's being used is horribly out of date. It doesn't reflect current conditions and it doesn't reflect trends right now. Um, and you know, I was going to bring forward a resolution for this meeting, but I've just I've been busy and I haven't been able to. Um, started talking to Mike and to Diana about it. Um, and the three of us realized that there's kind of, you know, the way the CAC is working right now, there's, a, it seems like there's a need for a subcommittee uh, that can kind of um, look at prioritization um, and, and kind of put together and prepare action items so that when we all get the, um, so that when we all get the, the notice of the meeting, um, we have something, you know, there, there's a body that's got something prepared timely so that we can get on the agenda and actually act on it. Um, and so, you know, more than more than talking about kind of the things that I see as needs that we need to address right now, um, I kind of wanted to suggest that we create a, uh, I mean, I'd call it a prioritization subcommittee, um, you know, especially with the MTP update coming. Um, you know, and and I believe there are a handful of items that, you know, could use uh, action at our next meeting. Um, you know, a, a subcommittee that's kind of steering that would just seem to make sense to me. Um, and I want to know what uh, public commissioners thought about that. SJ, so we formed a committee, I thought, uh, last CAC. OK, no, 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 I'm not uh, objecting what you're saying. I was more looking for clarification. I thought you were chairing that committee. What was the goal of that committee? Anybody got the minutes uh, on hand that could reference? Yeah, what the I'm pulling that up right now. And I apologize, my I mean, I basically Mike and I believe were tasked with coming forward with the resolution that I was looking to move on. So I guess I we were talking about it and I guess I. Uh, I might have been. I might have just thought that we didn't have. We weren't actually a committee as much as people kind of assigned to. No, I, I think we just need to I clarify more. I gotcha. So we were just going to have multiple. So your understanding is we had multiple people involved that were going to contribute to the resolution, and it was not a committee. It was people willing to contribute towards the resolution. 
Is that correct? Yeah, I'm just reading through the minutes right now. Yeah, I mean, part of the effort, da, 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 I'd like to work with Mr. Fenster, which I did. Um, yeah, and then calling a special session if necessary. So, okay. I mean, that's kind of how we left it. Um, and, you know, I guess I, I apologize. I'm, you know, I'm shorthanded running a business. I'm, someday I'll be retired and be able to spend as much time as, uh, as some of you on making this stuff happen. Um, but I figured uh, having having a committee structure would give us a little more, you know, give a few more people power to kind of move forward with something if, uh, if we decide it's a priority. Um, so I'd make a comment of, uh, you know, the packets that we receive uh, when the CAC is uh, involved with the, oh, what do they call them, workshops. Uh, the work packets sessions. are. Are you talking about work sessions or? Sorry. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, the work sessions, there's packets that when we participate in the work sessions that are extremely valuable, uh, giving the drafts uh, and maybe being able to have those packets prior to the meeting uh, would be extremely helpful that we could. Craig, did we receive those packets prior to the meetings in the past years or were they uh, just passed around at the meeting itself? Are you so our normal practice uh, is again to post something uh, the, a week in advance. You'll you'll get an email with the agenda and all the links are on there. Um, and then when we had meetings in per in in person, then the packets would also be at the meeting. So now that's what it was. It was dual spots. Actually, you're right. Now, that you, yeah. now that you say that, I do remember because we got it a week in advance, and then yes, we had hard large copies at the meeting. Yep. All right. And, and yeah, I guess my my issue personally is just that a week in advance when we're talking about you know a two to three hundred item and you know several hundred page document is. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to number one, chew through it, and then number two, come up with a response to it uh, in time to have an action in front of us. Uh, you know, basically the way the timing works, you know, we get, we get, we get like the MTP draft in front of us, um, and we, you know, it's by the time we get it, it's too late to come forward with an action item. So, you know, I don't know what the way around that is. But that's 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 kind of the issue of frustration that I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with a process that makes sense for us to be able to feel like we have some purchase in the process. Comments? Well, um, I, I guess I'll uh, speak up here. This is Diana. Um, I was I listened to the uh, your last meeting uh, because I was interested in possibly becoming a member, and I heard about that um, um, idea that that um, SJ had, and that kind of since we're starting with the MTP soon, it it sounded valuable to me to try to make some connections between the, the land use plan and the MTP and um, then Craig's recent email uh, asking for, um, you know, what the progress was on the resolution. He said uh, it something that would inform the policy committee as to the goals and the objectives because that's the first step of the MTP. So uh, maybe that is a, um, you know, first step is, um, and I'm interested in um, being a, an active member. I have time of either a subcommittee or work on the resolution to think about um, goals and objectives um, that can feed into the the uh, process. So just a comment is uh, we all represent different districts, and one of our most valuable things that we contribute is participation in MTP. So I I guess I'm a little concerned with making a subcommittee uh, where I believe this committee in its nature, you know, these are the people that we want comments for. I don't want to exclude any stakeholders out of our uh, group right here, but I would like I like the idea of uh, having a little bit more preparation. So what about a 
What about a workshop with the CHC? Happy to have one. We can schedule it. Yeah, Mike, I think that's a great idea. Is there any objections? And I guess um, I, I kind of share your concern. I think it's Matt that was talking is uh, when I think of this, you know, a, a large part of the our uh, our constituent our our membership are just the like residents of town. But I really think we need to involve the chamber of commerce commerce is so. That was one thing I, you know, want to make sure that, you know, it's not just the residents, but we are, you know, thinking as a group. And that workshop would probably be a good way to do that as, as uh, if they, if the, um, if everybody participates. This is, Mike, this is Bob French. I, I had a, <clears throat> sorry, a, a quick question or a comment on this. I think things like the MTP, which have a large and long lead time, um, we typically have enough time to be able to work things out and give a, a good response. I'm uh, a little more concerned about some of the items like the, um, you know, the governor's proposal to have the ATVs on the roads where, you know, there's a fairly limited time span um, for these things to come up and have a chance to be um, commented or have a resolution on. So I think we have to kind of look at the difference between, you know, some of the long-term um, responses versus a shorter-term response that the CAC would be looking to provide. I guess a uh, point of clarification, uh, I wasn't advocating for a workshop right now. Uh, I was advocating for a workshop once the the firm that's doing the 2050 uh, comes out with a uh, proposed listing of short long-term uh, projects that before uh, we're involved with the policy committee workshop that we could have our own internal dialogue and I was using a workshop for the CAC but not right now I'm assuming that I didn't don't remember the timeline that was so well put together on our newsletter, but uh, I, st I thought we were still a couple months out. Is that incorrect? Are you referring to the MTP? MTP 2015. Yeah. So, so we uh, we're meeting this week to uh, go over the proposals and uh, select a consultant, and then it's usually give or take about a month before all the details get worked out and the contract is signed, and that contractor can get can get rolling. Uh, but the the goals and objectives are the first part. The 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 project selection is later on, like a lot later on. But we will we will. The plan already is for the crew to uh, just like we did last time. The project team will be working with the CAC very early on uh, in the process, uh, not just when we get later on. When we get to the project selections very early on, just like we did last time. Bob, I apologize if I cut you off. Did you have some more to say? No, that was pretty much it. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Chair, this is Christine Vanell. Go ahead, Christine. Um, I thought earlier that SJ um, was suggesting that you all maybe have a subcommittee meeting to discuss the projects in the downtown plan and uh, whether you would want to make a recommendation for uh, a study at some point as well as including a couple of other projects related to to east downtown and fairview i don't know maybe i misunderstood that i, I thought no i completely he was heard that yeah, he did. Um, so what I'm going right now is off of uh, general information. SJ had listed uh, priority model and traffic to be moved. That suggestion that he had was mentioned and I was leaving under committee comments that that could be addressed. Right now I was uh, trying just to focus on it. Is that tie into 
part of uh, what's at hand here, SJ? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I guess, it depends on the structure that we come up with. I mean, if we had a standing work group or committee or whatever that met more often than quarterly, uh, you know, I mean, if we're talking about prioritization, um, you know, looking into the our downtown project makes sense to, you know, make bring that under the purview of, of the work group. Um, but, but, are these you know, two I mean, separate I, items? I, I, I believe they are two separate items. So yes, I mean, I guess to you know to answer your question, uh, yeah, I'd consider them two separate items. So let's focus yeah, on one. Uh, one, yeah. Okay. Let's just focus on the overall. To my understanding, you were talking about MTP, and you were uh, saying let's maybe make uh, subcommittees to discuss before MTP. And uh, is that correct? The kind of summarize. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. that's. I mean, it's obviously related just because I mean I think some items in other projects are going to relate to our MTP priorities. Um, but you know, I mean, I'm, I I agree that it's two separate items. Could you draft? So uh, this is just general information, and we can't take any action right mm -hmm. here. But if we have a action item, uh, we can discuss it and take a vote on it. Do you think you could draft something uh, that we can discuss and vote on this next meeting? Yeah, I guess Diana and uh, and Mike have agreed to work with me, and I think between the three of us, we can come up with something. So, perfect. Well, uh, do you have anything else, SJ, before we move on? Uh, yeah, as far as this item goes, I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, I've got two other items for later in the agenda related to. OK, I was just going to put it under committee comments. As soon as we get there, that's kind of open it up a little bit. Great, thanks. OK, well, if we don't have anything else under uh, general information, we're going to move to eight. Uh, committee comments and uh, SJ, you had well. <laughs> yeah, I know it doesn't really work as committee comments right there. Um, does anyone object to uh, amending the agenda to allow for committee members to have a? It, Craig, there's no there's no reason I can't uh, open the floor to committee members for any new business, as long as we don't take action, or does it need to be under general information? Are Are you saying would you like to add an informational item here? Is that what we're trying to do? That's probably the best way. So I'm going to move yeah. back up to general information. Are there any objections to adding a general information item? of uh sj had mentioned well, are there any other members that want to add items right now or forever hold your peace so we're just uh discussing sj's action item of uh a downtown uh creating another committee for potentially a downtown traffic recommendations is that are there any objections to amending the agenda Go for it, SJ. Okay. Um, the Our Downtown Plan has a number of projects, as you've heard, that uh, that correlate and 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 relate to the work that we do on this committee. Um, and so, I would like to see the. Um, I guess there are two issues. One is how do they relate to uh, the MTP and the LRTP and the TIP and the STIP. Uh, and then the you know the second issue is just um, a matter of prioritization and and how do they how do uh, how do the um, how do the AMATS priorities uh, comport with the priorities that are identified in this plan? And so um, yeah, yeah, I would like to see a group established or a, a work group or a committee established to uh, review the R downtown and come up with some recommendations for AMATS as it relates to the R downtown plan. Comments? Well, SJ, I would say the same thing is uh, let's get some motions going so we can actually have some meaningful debate and find out uh, if we have the support of creating these committees or uh, if people are happy with the uh, status quo. Great. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. So moving on to uh, eight 
committee comments. So it sounds like we technically did not create any committee. We just had members that were going to work with SJ with the writing his draft. So uh, move on to public comments. Do we have any members of the public that would like to have any comments? We don't have any right now, but I'm going to ask and if we can just wait about 30 seconds to make sure there is a delay in the feed. Okay, doesn't sound like we have any. I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn in Evan. Thank you, Diana. Mike Fenster, second. Okay, we are adjourned. Okay. Thank you, everybody, and uh, look forward to getting some fresh resolutions. And uh, sounds like we're going to have some good debate this next meeting. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.